Here is one of the coolest examples of this to date. And this is work done by a guy at McGill University named Michael Meany. And what he is focused on is what started off as a very artificial literature, which is take yourself a newborn rat, and for the first two weeks or so of its life, every day you pick it up for three minutes and you pet it. And now you put it back. And all else being equal, it will have a bigger brain in adulthood, better learning abilities, more resistance to a whole bunch of neurological insults, lower glucocorticoid levels, etc. That whole world of what came to be known as neonatal handling. On the other hand, pick up the rat, take it away from mom for instead of three minutes, an hour and a half, then each day put him back. And as an adult, it's going to have a smaller brain and a shorter life expectancy. Three minutes away from mom does wonders. An hour and a half of being petted does not. That in and of itself is interesting in terms of what counts as stimulation, what counts as stress. Okay, so hooray, what we've just learned is just how generations of rat petting graduate students can influence the lineages of rat brains and all of that. And what Meany started looking at with this phenomenon being one that was around forever, first identified around 1960 by a guy named Seymour Levine in the psychiatry department here, no longer alive. But that started this whole world of neonatal handling. What Meany did was say, well, rats did not evolve whatever's going on here for the purpose of doctoral theses. What's the, world, what's the natural equivalent in the world of a rodent. And it turns out that what happens when you pick up a rat for three minutes and do this and put it back, mom is all excited and goes and checks out the pup and nuzzles it and nestles it and licks it and whatever other stuff there and has all this attention Whereas if you take the pup out for an hour and a half, when you put him back with mom, mom basically ignores the pup for long periods of time, you're changing the mother's behavior. Okay, so that's an indirect effect. And what he proceeded to show was the critical thing about the handling was not what you're doing to the rat during that time, it's the fact that you're causing dramatic changes in maternal behavior based on that. So that's interesting. But that still doesn't solve the problem of why did the system evolve for grad students manipulating maternal behavior. And what he then proceeded to look at was normal variation in rat mothering styles. Because some rat mothers are, okay, I know this is a value judgment, but some rat mothers are better mothers than other mothers. Some rat mothers, they simply are better. They're better, they're nicer, they have better souls. And in these rat mothers, how do you determine that by these sorts of measures? Licking and grooming. How much time do you spend licking your baby? And how much time do you spend grooming your baby? And what Meany proceeded to show is that's what the neonatal handling phenomenon was about. When you have moms who lick and groom their kids an awful lot, what you do is produce the same sort of better outcome from the three minutes of petting deal there. You get the kid who is bigger and healthier and smarter, that sort of thing. Moms who hardly ever lick and groom their pups, they produce pups that as adults are like the ones that were separated for an hour and a half a day. It is a reflection of mothering style in the rats and the variability there. Next thing he showed was that this was multi-generational. If you lick and groom your baby rat daughter a whole lot as an adult, she will be more of a licker and groomer. And he's already shown what some of the neurological mechanisms are for that, for development. What have we got? Yet again, one of these non-Mendelian inheritance of traits deals going on. In this case, not even prenatal. Your early experience is going to cause lifelong changes in your brain, which will make you more likely to reproduce the same early experience for your offspring. Off you go. The final thing he did, which stands as a landmark in the field of behavioral neurobiology, is he figured out what the epigenetic change is. One of them, or rather two of them, he was identified by now, what gets changed by how mom often or unoften licks you, grooms you, all of that, you change the access of transcription factors relevant to making genes, to activating genes for making receptors for stress hormones, making receptors for estrogen, 
making receptors for a whole bunch of different hormones, showing the epigenetic changes there. That's how you go from mom's differing maternal style to lifelong differences in expression of all sorts of genes. How's this? What you wind up seeing there as this permanent mechanism, it is also reversible, what he has since shown which is you have a baby rat who spends the first half of its infancy with some totally terrible, negligent, distracted mom who pays no attention and doesn't do any... Now, cross-foster the pup to a more attentive mother and you can change the epigenetic pattern. So all of this has two themes going on, early experience causing really persistent differences in how this stuff works long after, and experience later on having the potential to reverse some of this. All of this stuff, once again, would be mistaken for genetic. What we have here is what appears to be a genetic style of what sort of mother rat you are, and it's not genes, it's the mothering style setting up the offspring for being a similar type of mother. Incredibly important studies demonstrating this. What remains unclear is how you get from mom licking you to something epigenetic happening. Here, his crew is pounding away at that.